So Bert is a, a freelance director. He's a very dear friend as well. He currently works as a TV commercials director. He's directed ad campaigns for clients such as BreadTalk, Canon, Coca-Cola, Dumac, Singtel, Starhub, Unilever in Singapore and around Asia. So he does Coke. Coca-Cola, <laughs> does Coca-Cola, and then Jasmine does uh, Pepsi, they can go find it out outside, it would be very interesting. Mm. Okay, so he's also won numerous awards for his short films, okay, among these are La Conquista, which was screened at uh, Select, which is the association of the world's major, films, uh, major film schools, okay, Anniversary Festival, which named it one of the best student films made in its 50 year history. In 2004, Bertrand directed Birthday, it was the opening film for the short film section of the prestigious Venice Film Festival. It subsequently went on to screen at more than 50 international festivals, picking up six international festival awards. Please put your hands together and welcome Bertrand Lee. Hello, good afternoon. Can I just have a show of hands who are the people from the industry? Okay, about half. And the rest of the people? Spice? <laughs> Insurance people? Okay, anyway, um, okay, I'm here today um, not to give you any information. I'm just like many of you, I'm just a production person, so I don't really know much about safety, but um, what you see up there is a newspaper article about me. So just to give you some background on myself, this was actually more or less covered by Ian already. All right, so I'm just going to jump straight to this newspaper article, which was in 2005. So what happened to me in 2005 was I suffered a road traffic accident. So it was a accident at work, but it wasn't really a work accident. Uh, okay, it's a bit complicated, but never mind. Let me explain. Okay. So what happened was, um, I was actually on a filming assignment. I was filming a commercial in Mumbai, India. That was in 2005. Now, I wasn't on the set when it happened. What happened was, I was about to go for a recce, which is what we do when we look for a location and I had some free time. So I actually went to a very nice area in Mumbai called Marine Drive. All right, that is our equivalent of our East Coast Park, actually. So it's, uh, it's just a coastal area. So you have the beach on one side, you have people having picnics, so on and so forth. So there I was with a camera, just snapping pictures around, and all of a sudden I didn't notice a construction truck, a very heavy construction truck. I think it was a one or two ton. Eh? Yep, a two ton construction truck reverse onto me without warning. So um, at that point of time, there was no, I wasn't looking out for a truck because if you're at East Coast Park, nobody looks out for things like that, if you know what I mean. But uh, countries like India, you know, some of them tend to be a little bit more complicated. So it was really a one in a million freak accident. What happened was, yeah, it reversed onto me. It crushed and pinned my entire lower body underneath. Yeah, because of that, uh, these were the injuries I suffered from the accident. Okay, so what happened was my left leg was completely crushed and flattened. Now, those uh, of you guys older in the production industry might know that I suffered this accident, but I think that a lot of people don't know the extent of the accident. Yeah, because uh, I was I wasn't ready to share so much about the accident then because it was quite a big thing for me. All right, but uh, okay. So for the purposes of this uh, safety seminar, I'm just going to run through what actually happened. So left leg was completely crushed and flattened. So right leg as well was also crushed and flattened. So there were multiple fractures on the right leg. All right. So both legs were broken. Obviously, there was also pelvic fracture. All right. So because of all that, there was also multiple joint disruptions. After the surgery, one of the surgeons actually mentioned that it's actually the worst possible injuries a human can sustain without dying. And uh, yeah, on that day itself, it really felt like that. So what happened was I had immediate surgery to amputate the left leg. Thank goodness the right leg was salvageable. 
right? So there was uh, nailing and screwing of the right leg fractures, external fixations of pelvic fractures. So because all of the muscles were completely crushed, basically my lower body was like a pancake, basically. So you had to reconstruct the calf, I had to have skin grafts on my right leg, all right? But the worst thing of all was, I was 100% conscious from the point of impact until the surgery for more than five hours. Okay, at this point of time, a lot of you are looking very serious, but if you look at me right now, I'm actually quite fine. All right, nine years have passed, so that, that is all in the past already. Thank you. Okay, but moving on from there, there were further complications arising in hospital because uh, when your body suffers trauma like that, it is not, uh, it, the recovery period does not happen overnight. Okay, so because of uh, the severity of the accident and because I was at a spot where it wasn't so clean, there were multiple infections with septic shock. Yeah, so because of that as well, because of so much impact, uh, a lot of trauma. I also had many, many seizure episodes while I was in hospital, right? So obviously because of the trauma as well, you get acute stress disorder, right? So this is actually a real thing, right? So um, what happens when you lose a limb as well? Have you all heard this term, phantom limb pain? Now basically, it's the sensation that your limb is still present because what your brain the brain always thinks that the body is whole, so after you lose a limb, you still get the sensation that the limb is there. So for about a year or so, um, what I felt was my missing leg would sometimes be painful or itchy or well, things like that. Like you still feel the sensation. I don't feel it so often now, I just feel it every now and then, but you somehow get used to the feeling. Okay, neuropathic pain. So this is, uh, well, just the pain that you feel from having an injury like that. Okay, so while I was in hospital and I was there for about six months before I got out, yeah, I underwent another 15 surgeries while in hospital. Okay, so because all the injuries were in the lower body as well, it actually gets worse. All right, I had intestinal obstruction. So because of the intestinal obstruction, there was acute renal failure. So when you have acute renal failure, what that means is that whatever food you consume is unable to pass out. So it's actually something that happens to a lot of old people when they get colon cancer. Yeah? And then what the doctors have to do is they have to bypass the intestines and they have to fit a colostomy back, right? Which is something like this for your fecal matter to pass out. So I was actually attached with that in the hospital. So if you think of a 20 plus year old guy with so much going on, I mean, it was really quite terrible. Yeah. So um, my whole point of sharing all this is well, it's not to, not to make the mood serious, but my whole point of sharing all this is because I'm trying to say that um, accidents do happen, right? So far, we haven't had a serious work accident in Singapore yet, touch wood, yeah? But uh, mine was the one in a million, so if it happened to me, it could very well happen to anyone else, right? So other than the trauma suffered by myself, obviously, there were a lot of financial damage as well, which is the main point. So if you talk about the financial damage, there was emergency surgery and amputation in Mumbai. So because the medical care wasn't that fantastic there, um, after the surgery, very soon after, I had a medical evacuation from Mumbai to Singapore. All right. So following that, I had a six month stay in hospital. Now the medical evacuation, very fortunately, what I had covered at the point of time was I had a very good uh, travel insurance plan which covered all of this. Yeah? So after that six months stay in hospital, I also had to have outpatient acupuncture and physiotherapy. Acupuncture because Western medicine well only went so far, so 
to stop the pain, I actually went for acupuncture as well, as well as to help with the body aches and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm fitted with a prosthetic limb right now that's on my left side. Okay, so parts replacements are needed every few years. So because of that, I was also um, out of work, not out of work, yeah, but I was unable to work from 2.05 to 2.08 because the recovery period really took a very, very long time. Okay? So even after I've recovered, right now I have a lifelong reliance on opiate pain medication. So opiate, anyone knows what's opiate medication? Yes, Jasmine? Morphine? No, opiate is a derivative of opium. Yeah, so basically what I'm taking is this medicine called methadone, which is used in Australia to wean people off heroin. Funny, right? Yeah, but every time I take it from the hospital, I have to sign up for it, yeah, because it's a controlled drug. Yeah, so all of that, right? So total expenses incurred to date. Anyone care to guess? Half a million? Half a million, I think, covered the six months stay in the hospital and 15 surgeries, don't forget. Medical care is expensive. Um, okay, but then insurance is covering a lot of that, not thankfully. All right, so frankly speaking, total expenses incurred to date and it's actually rising because I have you know, lifelong medication as well as prosthetics replacements. It is really a seven-figure sum financially, yeah? So, not to scare you guys or anything, but I mean, this is a real case scenario which uh, I just like to share with all of you. All right? Okay, so um, I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Please give a round of applause, because it, it takes a lot to share, it's all thing, so I'm very grateful. Thanks,